Fox 32 has investigated, investigated Henyard's use of a police security detail, taking officers off the street and costing thousands of dollars. You could feel the anger tonight at a board of trustees meeting in Thornton Township. The board and citizens looking for accountability to their finances while the township supervisor. Ladies and gentlemen, buckle up because today's video dives deep into the scandalous saga unfolding in Dalton. Illinois is a small town rocked by big time drama. This isn't your everyday political scandal. Oh no. This is a tale of corruption, intimidation, and yes, even an attempted elimination. The central figure in this explosive story is none other than Mayor Tiffany Hunyard, a woman who some say has turned the town into her personal playground. Is there a motion to terminate Keith Freeman? And at the heart of this controversy is a chilling accusation. Did Mayor Hinyard order a hit on her most vocal critic? Let's get into the nitty gritty of this dramatic feud and find out. The video starts with a bang, literally. In the early hours of July 14th, 2023, a quiet Dalton neighborhood was jolted awake by the sound of gunfire. Former village trustee Valeria Stubbs, a fierce critic of Mayor Henyard, awoke to find her property riddled with bullets. At least nine rounds were fired into cars parked outside her home, two vehicles belonging to her tenants, leaving a trail of shattered glass and twisted metal in their wake. But this wasn't just a random act of violence. Stubbs is convinced this was a targeted attack orchestrated by the mayor herself. Absolutely, she told reporters, without a shred of doubt in her voice. She believes this was a message sent by Henyard, a warning to back off or face dire consequences. Deep debt, and that is the finding of an investigation of village finances and the spending habits of beleaguered mayor Tiffany Henyard. So who is Tiffany Henyard and why would a small town mayor stoop so low? Well. Let's rewind a bit and paint a picture of the woman who's been called America's worst mayor by her critics. Henyard came into power in 2021 and quickly made a name for herself, but not in the way one might hope. From the get-go, her tenure has been mired in controversy and scandal. There are allegations that she has misused public funds on personal luxuries, including lavish dinners, extravagant trips, and even a bizarre DJ session during a town hall meeting where she blasted Rihanna's can't better have my money. Yeah, you heard that right. This is a mayor who likes to live large and at the taxpayer's expense. I do not handle anything as relates to with credit cards. As you heard me speak today in my board meeting about, I do not handle that. Some of those charges are for you though. No, sir. But it doesn't stop at wasteful spending. There's a darker side to Henyard's reign. Critics have accused her of running Dalton like a personal fiefdom, using her power to intimidate and silence anyone who dares to oppose her. And the primary target of her wrath, Valeria Stubbs, a retired Cook County Sheriff's deputy and former trustee who has never shied away from calling out the mayor's questionable antics. Stubbs has been a thorn in Henyard's side, publicly criticizing her decisions, including the hiring of a registered offender as a village code enforcement officer. This heated feud escalated when Stubbs organized an unsuccessful recall effort against Henyard, an action that only seemed to provoke the mayor further. I think you should pay everybody. Is it a reason why you guys are not paying uh, whatever that vendor is? What was it for? Um, it was for shirts. That's what it's for. You just got Let's not forget the bizarre snow shoveling incident a moment straight out of a reality TV show. During a particularly harsh winter, Henyard showed up unannounced at Stubbs' home with a shovel in hand. Smiling for the camera, she cleared Stubbs' driveway, proclaiming, this is what it looks like when you pull up on your haters. Stubbs, visibly confused, emerged from her home, clearly not amused by Henyard's antics. She later clarified that she never requested the mayor's assistance. She was just harassing me, Stubbs stated at a subsequent board meeting. This strange episode only added fuel to the fire, with Henyard appearing more like a reality TV diva than a town mayor. Sometimes we get invoices, but those invoices lead to more questions, and sometimes we don't get questions, um, answers to those questions, and so it's not about clickbait, it's about just making sure the right thing is As tensions mounted, the feud took a terrifying turn. Stubbs recounts another incident where Henyard arrived at her property with a caravan of police and city workers ringing doorbells and asking her tenants where she were. It was as if Henyard was conducting a personal vendetta, using village resources to do so. And then came the shooting. The brazen attack in July wasn't just a random act of violence, it was the climax of months of escalating tension, a dark escalation in their very, very public battle. Hey guys, this is Super Mayor to me, and you're the people's mayor and people's supervisor. Here's where things get even more interesting. New evidence has recently come to light, suggesting that this feud is far from just a petty political squabble. Neighbors have started to speak out anonymously, of course, fearing retaliation. They've shared stories of strange men loitering around Stubbs' home in the days leading up to the shooting. And get this video footage from a doorbell camera shows two men fleeing the scene immediately after the gunshots rang out, jumping into a white car and speeding off. It's the kind of stuff straight out of a crime thriller. Now, 
Let's talk about Mayor Henyard's alleged connection to this attempted attack. Could she really be capable of such a heinous act? Some say yes. According to multiple sources, Henyard has a history of using the police force as her own personal enforcers. A former Dalton police chief, Robert Collins, who was fired by Henyard, has come forward with damning claims about her misuse of police resources. Collins alleges that Henyard kept officers on her personal security detail, pulling them off street patrols even during times of critical understaffing. We needed those officers to be on the street fighting crime, Collins stated. Instead, we have several officers that are riding around protecting the mayor. It doesn't take a leap of imagination to see how such tactics could extend to more nefarious activities. Could Henyard have used her influence over the police to orchestrate an attack on Stubbs? Some believe it's possible, especially considering the sheer fear she has instilled in the community. Residents are reportedly terrified, constantly looking over their shoulders, informing each other of their whereabouts, and living in a state of perpetual anxiety. One resident said, We don't trust the police here, suggesting a deeply entrenched climate of fear and mistrust under Henyard's rule. I am about to address some things as the supervisor. Uh, there will be no comments, there will be anything, it'll just be me addressing you guys to tell you what's going on. But wait, there's more. Remember when we mentioned Henyard's penchant for the dramatic? Well, it seems her theatrics aren't limited to public appearances. Sources suggest she has ties to organized crime. While this might sound like a wild accusation, consider the evidence the mysterious men seen outside Stubbs' home the boldness of the shooting, the lack of any substantial police investigation afterward. It all points to someone with both power and a disregard for the rule of law. Someone like Henyard, who critics say runs Dalton with an iron fist and a flair for the dramatic. Mr. Lacey is absolutely not guilty of all nine counts. I believe he's cooperating. And if you cooperate, you have to admit your guilt first. As the scandal continues to unfold, more witnesses are stepping forward, emboldened by the growing media scrutiny and the possibility that Henyard's days in power might be numbered. These witnesses, speaking on the condition of anonymity, have painted a picture of a mayor who not only misses public funds but also doesn't hesitate to resort to violence to maintain her grip on power. They allege that Henyard is involved with local gangs and has leveraged these connections to eliminate her political rival. This would explain her heavy-handed approach to policing an effort not so much to fight crime but to control it. No, sir. You didn't go to Las Vegas? Mmm. What is that? No comment. And then there's the curious case of Dalton's police department. Under Henyard's leadership, the town's finances have plummeted into the red, with millions of dollars unaccounted for. Mismanagement is so rampant that even police cruisers are at risk of repossession due to non-payment. This financial chaos raises a burning question, has Henyard's alleged alliance with criminal elements contributed to the deliberate weakening of Dalton's law enforcement? By undermining the police force, Henyard could ensure that any criminal activities, especially those that benefit her, go unchecked. It's a chilling thought but one that more and more people in Dalton are starting to entertain. Eliminate his employment. I don't believe that is legally correct. That's just not the way municipalities operate, right? Now, let's talk about the broader implications of this scandal. What does it say about local governance when a mayor allegedly uses her position to harass, intimidate, and possibly even eliminate someone? It's a stark reminder that power can corrupt absolutely, especially in small towns where oversight is minimal, and the lines between personal vendettas and public service become dangerously blurred. Henyard's administration has been characterized by a lack of transparency, an abuse of power, and a relentless pursuit of personal gain, all at the expense of Dalton's residents. The situation in Dalton has reached a boiling point, with calls for Henyard's resignation growing louder. Even former allies have turned against her. Thornton Township trustee Carmen Carlisle, who was once part of Henyard's inner circle, has come forward as a whistleblower accusing Henyard of unethical and predatory behavior. Carlisle's decision to speak out is a significant blow to Henyard, who has long relied on a tight-knit group of loyalists to shield her from criticism. But now, with the walls closing in, it seems even her staunchest supporters are jumping ship. Coming in, I mean, unfortunately, we knew it was going to be a little messy, um, but it's just something we felt important that had to be done, that should be done. So, but like I said, yeah, just some accountability. It's not just local critics who are raising their voices the Illinois State Comptroller has taken the unprecedented step of withholding funds from Dalton due to the village's failure to comply with financial reporting laws, a move directly attributed to Henyard's mismanagement. The Comptroller's actions have further fueled the fire, signaling that even state officials are fed up with Henyard's antics. This financial stranglehold could be the final nail in the coffin for Henyard's political career, as Dalton's already struggling economy cannot afford to lose vital state funding. But the administration can adhere to some financial limits we're not looking to necessarily... As the investigation into Henyard's actions intensifies, with federal subpoenas being served and rumors of an FBI probe swirling, one thing is clear the drama in Dalton is far from over. Residents are demanding answers, accountability, 
and most of all, justice. They want to know if their mayor is indeed a corrupt official willing to go to any lengths to silence her detractors. Or worse, if she is a criminal mastermind with ties to organized crime, using her position of power to commit unspeakable acts. In conclusion, as the saga of Tiffany Henyard unfolds, it leaves us with a lot to ponder. Is Henyard just a corrupt politician? Or is there something even more sinister at play? Could this be a case of a small town mayor turning rogue? Or are we witnessing the rise and fall of a political figure with deep criminal ties? Until next time, stay tuned, keep questioning, and don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comments below.